You're listening to an archived Cabral Concept podcast. After listening to this show, check out the most up-to-date podcasts available at stephencabral.com slash podcasts or search directly on iTunes. And now, welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurvedic healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Hi, everyone, and welcome back. It's great to have you here today on the show. Excited that we get to go into our part two of the house calls. We got through a lot of questions yesterday. I think we got through around eight to 10 questions. Really fun show, very different questions. For those show questions and all of my answers, head on over to stephencabral.com forward slash 1296. And today's show will be 1297. So on the show today, we're going to be answering hopefully another somewhere between 6 and 10 questions. I'm looking forward to getting these questions. I never look at them ahead of time. And the reason is that I want to go in fresh. I don't want to overthink it. I want to give you the thoughts that come to me as if you were sitting with me in that consultation. So what I like to do is give people that best place to get started. Maybe it's seeking out a practitioner. Maybe it is looking more in depth at another podcast or running a lab or doing a protocol or particular food or answering a question about an herb. You name it, I'm going to give you my best effort to help you get started on that path to getting well, losing weight, and feeling alive again. So without further ado, let's jump right into the show. The first question today is coming in from Nicole. And she is saying, hey, Dr. Brawl, I have to start with saying thank you for putting all of your work out into the world. You're doing great, and I'm loving the Integrative Health Practitioner Level 1 and 2. My question today is about systemic enzymes. My partner's had a lot of surgery in the past and was asking about them. I'd love to know your thoughts on them, how they work, if you believe they're effective, and maybe other alternatives if you think there are any. Many thanks from New Zealand. Absolutely happy to help with this. We use systemic enzymes, sometimes called proteolytic enzymes. That's usually how I refer to them as. And if you go to stephencabral.com forward slash podcast, you'll be able to search proteolytic enzymes. Keep in mind our Flora Film, a product that we offer, is a systemic proteolytic enzyme. For someone that has joint-based pain, you've heard us recommend a, a brand called Wobenzyme before. Wobenzyme PS, that's a great one. You'll see that linked up as well in in certain show notes. So you can look that up. It's W-O-B-E-N-Z-Y-M. So, but you can just type in proteolytic and you'll be able to find it at a previous podcast. So I do think that they're excellent. They're great for stenosis in the arteries, hardening of the arteries. They're great for bone spurs. They're great for joint-based pain. And they're great products. So absolutely, I recommend them away from food. Rudy's up next. Hello, Dr. Ball. My brother has been dealing with GERD and acid reflux for most of his life. He's 31, about 100 pounds overweight. In his early 20s, he had ulcers in his throat that were caused by acid reflux. This was successfully treated by a GI specialist with Nexium and diet change. I want to just stop there because it's actually not successfully treated. I want to just kind of back up there for a second. All they did was mask the symptoms, right? If you need Nexium, You didn't do anything to fix it. What you did was you gave a drug to mask the symptoms of acid reflux. This is not your brother's fault. This is not your fault, Rudy. But I'm just saying, there was no successful treatment. There was a successful masking of the symptoms. All right, I'll go on. The diet change basically lasted for as long as it took to heal the ulcers, and then he went back to his old ways. Recently, he's told me that he's quite sure he has them again. I'm encouraging him to get a scope, and make sure there's not anything more serious to change his diet. He's a chef at a restaurant, doesn't serve the healthiest food, and also makes it hard for him to not eat all the time. He also has late hours, high stress. What, if anything, can he do to naturally go along with his diet? He's convinced he can't heal them without prescriptions, but if there's anything along with diet change that you would work on that he'd be willing to try. Thanks for doing what you do. You've changed my life, and I hope to help change my brothers. So, Rudy, here's the hard truth. The hard truth is this. And I know you want to help people so bad. I 
see things that happen to my family, I'm like, oh, my, you shouldn't be doing that, right? You shouldn't be doing that. I have a family member that eats these little donuts sometimes for breakfast. And I'm like, what are you doing? I'm like, you can't do that. I know that you're only eating two, but there's probably nothing worse that you could eat than that hydrogenated oil and that powdered sugar and that trans fat. Like we, we just, what are we doing here? But you can't, right? You can't make them change. So you can open the door. You can bring them to the water, but you can't make them walk through the door and you can't make them drink the water. Acid reflux can be fixed. This is always root causal. There's always something there. When did he start to get it? He started to get it in his early 20s. Why didn't he have acid reflux when he was eight? Well, the reason was life caught up to him. He filled up that rain barrel. And yes, he would have to change his nutrition. But along with that, keep in mind, if you're eating poorly, you have acid reflux, you most likely have massive digestive issues from cutting off your stomach acid. You are then most likely have some type of SIBO or H. pylori or parasites or candida or all four that are then going to cause immune-based issues and you'll end up with an autoimmune issue. Absolutely inflammation right now. So potentially higher levels of cholesterol, high blood pressure being 100 pounds overweight, potential a hiatal hernia, which could be fixed sometimes just by losing the weight. So there's lots of hope for your brother. This is absolutely fixable, but he has to want to do it. I mean, the best thing I could say is, is can you get him a copy of the rain barrel effect? Would he read that? And if he does, great. I mean, that's a first thing. Can he start to listen to this podcast? Not maybe this specific one, but what about the one I just did last week? So check this out. Episode 1298. Please forward that one to him. It's how using proton pump inhibitors like Prilosec can actually cause a host of allergy and autoimmune issues. So that would be a good show to 1292. Okay, 1292 would be the show to forward over. All right. But, um, you know, Rudy, I wish you the best. We can run the big five, and the data he would get would transform his life, but he has to be willing and, and really interested in doing it. I work with a lot of chefs, okay? They're all busy. They all work crazy hours. But many of them do change their life. They really do. And because of that, some of them actually start to serve healthier food to people as well, or at least a couple dishes in the restaurant. That's not a bad thing either. We can all change the world together, right? But no one of us can do it alone. Judy's up next. What is your protocol for someone with mononucleosis? All right, mononucleosis, sometimes referred to as mono for short. Well, mononucleosis, typically, like I said, called mono, is often caused by a separate virus, which is called Epstein-Barr virus. Now, Mono usually only lasts for a couple weeks. But some people, they relapse and they relapse and they relapse. So what we want to do is work on this to strengthen the immune system to create such a healthy body that the virus can't live inside of it. I do the same thing for Epstein-Barr virus. I do the same thing for all herpes viruses, herpes zoster. You name the herpes virus, we're doing that. As well as mono. So all we have to do is go to the adult immune protocol, and you will see exactly what I recommend for adults and also children to boost that immune system for a couple weeks when you have this in order to be able to overcome it quickly and essentially get more rest, easy to digest foods, don't overstress, don't overtax yourself because typically that's how the body got run down in the first place and then it was susceptible to this, right? Because not everyone gets mono. A lot of people, a lot of people, a lot of people have Epstein-Barr virus, but 80%, they say, have it, but not everyone has ever felt it. And that's because it stays dormant in the body. So, Judy, that's what I would do. All right, Hunter's up next. Hey, team, I am beginning my wellness journey after finding Dr. Brawl through the Apple Podcast app and getting a copy of the Rain Barrel Effect. Love the content. My symptoms are aligning with thyroid and adrenal issues, but we will see what the labs say. I purchased a daily protocol level three because it is a protocol I've been looking for for years. I plan on purchasing the big five and a detox at the end of the week. With this being my first detox, I'm inclined to purchase the 21 day detox to start fresh. However, I'm already relatively thin or he says skinny guy and hard gainer at 6'5", 
205 pounds with 20% body fat. I'm worried that losing upwards of 15 pounds, I would look skinny and like a bobblehead. My end goal is to lessen my overall body fat with detox or elimination diet. I want to gain enough muscle to be in the 210, 220 range. I have no desire to be a bodybuilder. My fear is dropping down to 190 and not being able to recover to a higher mass after eating a vegetable-based diet. I've never tried. At 23, my hormones balancing out. The additional weight with adding muscle mass is a long question, but I, but it's a great question. So for everyone, if you want to read this question in full, I want you to head on over to stephencabral.com forward slash 1297. I'm going to give you the gist, all right? So goes through past history, goes through playing sports and dealing with issues of anxiety and depression, always felt like they had low testosterone, inclined to take my body back and begin living well. Should I do the 21 DT talks or just start with the seven day? Thanks for the content and supplementation. I look forward to working with your team, my health journey soon. So appreciate the question, Hunter. I've read the whole thing. A great question. This was written on July 9th. So everybody else will be listening to this on August 25th. So just keep in mind that we are catching up in shows because our team is answering a lot of kind of questions in between, but we're still about, what are we, seven weeks or so behind, I think. So here's the thing. I'm sure you already got your question answered, but I want to give you the answer. So here's the thing. If you want to be sub 15% body fat, and that means you have 5% body fat to lose, you're going to need to lose some weight in the first place. So my goal is to always ask people, do you want to gain muscle? Is that more of a priority or do you want to lose body fat? Because they're, they don't work easily together. You can do it, but it's much easier to gain muscle mass at a surplus versus trying to lose body fat and gain muscle at the same time. Difficult, more difficult. It can be done, but more difficult. So at 200 pounds, you're 205, but let's do simple math. All right, I like simple math. 5% of 200 pounds is 10 pounds. Okay, so you need to lose 10 pounds of body fat. Well, the detox will do that. Once you lose the 10 pounds and you get to your 15% body fat, if you feel like, oh, I want to keep going, I want to lose a little bit more, keep on going. But you don't have to stop the detox. If someone doesn't want to lose weight in the detox, they can actually add berries in to their smoothies. And they can actually add some sweet potatoes to their meals. So I'm not saying that you can't do that. When I'm doing a detox, if I've kind of already met what I want for weight loss, I'll typically start to add in some, just some sweet potato. I don't add the berries in the shakes yet. I just try to keep that, keep that part of the detox going because I know I can gain the weight back if I want to. So that's what I'm recommending for you. Absolutely do the detox. I mean, it's the, one of the healthiest things that you can do. You learn about eating. When you run the big five labs, I will absolutely be looking over your labs. You'll get a health coaching call with one of my amazing integrative health practitioners. And um, yeah, you'll begin to work the process. So I think you're doing great. The big five labs are going to give you all the content that you need. You're going to get a specific protocol for you. I'm glad that you're loving foundational protocol level three. Keep up the great work. And then um, if you want, pick up my book, A Man's Guide to Muscle and Strength. It's for women too, but the publisher called it A Man's Guide. And um, begin some of those programs. The book is like $15 on Amazon. I make like a dollar per book. That's it. I'm trying, just like the rain barrel effect, I'm trying to get my best work out there to people. And that's one year of workouts. And like, it's all yours for $15. <laughs> I mean, like it's, I think it's a good deal. Of course I'm biased. But you know, if it wasn't and you order from Equilibrium Nutrition, we'll always give you a refund too. So feel free to do that if you want. I'm always willing to take the risk. All right. Karen's up next. She writes in, Hello, I've recently completed a food intolerance test which showed a mild intolerance to yeast. Would this include an intolerance to Saccharomyces boulardii? Thank you for all your knowledge, sharing, and wisdom. Your podcasts have changed my outlook on life and health. Thank you. Karen, that means a lot to me. Every time someone writes a line like that, in every single one, I know kind of sometimes I move past it, and that's because sometimes I feel awkward reading them, but it's, it is the, it's what's written, and, and, and it does make me feel great. I mean, it really does. I feel good that I'm able to help people because the truth is this. I'm recording my podcast right now in my Boston office. I'm surrounded by all of my books. I'm surrounded by all artifacts that I brought over from back from seas. I'm surrounded by my microscope. I've got my acupuncture statues. 
I've got photos right in front of me from one of the meditation spots I sat in when I was in India. Uh, that means a lot to me in the Ganges River. I've got another one from China when I visited with my one day off uh, one of the Buddhist temples and I went to the Great Wall of China. So here's the thing though, but I never get to meet you. I never get to see you. So for people writing in with these comments, it, it means a lot to me. When you share your success story on Facebook and you tag me, or you share it on Instagram and you tag me or IHP or, or our team, it's great. I mean, this is really this is why we do what we do. This is why no matter what I'm doing for my day, no matter how many people I see or whatever the meetings may be, I like to take a little time out and do this podcast because I, I just hope that the knowledge I've been able and fortunate and I'm grateful to have accumulated over the past 20 years that I can now pass on to others. And that hopefully one day you'll share it with others as well. That's the goal. All right. So now to your question, which is a good one. So you showed high for yeast on the food sensitivity test. Okay. So that yeast is actually called Saccharomyces cerevisiae. Now, very important because there's two things. One, it's used as the yeast in most baked goods and bread to leaven it. Okay, very, very important. So that means you won't want to be eating baked goods or breads with yeast that cause it to rise and leaven. They actually make breads without yeast. Delands makes an oat bread without yeast. It's made with oats and water only. I wish it said organic. It doesn't. It comes in the freezer section, but you can check it out. Okay, so I could go on and on about other breads, but we, we won't talk about that. I don't think bread should be a cornerstone of your diet in the first place, but anyway. Okay, here's the other thing. People say all the time, why don't you offer more food-based vitamins? Well, most food-based vitamins are not really food-based vitamins. I hate to break the secret. You know, I really do. Most food-based vitamins are extracts from fungus, mushrooms, a fungus, and yeast, sometimes referred to as a fungus, right? And it comes from Saccharomyces cerevisiae a lot of the time. Okay, here's the nice thing. Saccharomyces boulardii is not in that family. Saccharomyces boulardii acts as a non-pathogenic yeast that helps push the pathogenic yeast out of your intestines. So Saccharomyces boulardii, safe. Again, I can't provide medical advice for you, but safe for most of the people that will use the protocol, the CBO protocol. And we haven't met people that it haven't been, but there's, I'm sure there's a person out there. And it's not to be confused with Saccharomyces cerevisiae. All right. Thank you, Karen. All right. Let's get another question. Shay is up next. Hi, Dr. Brawl. I absolutely love listening to your podcast. You're a gifted presenter and make understanding information really easy. My question is about menopause. I want to know how to rebalance my body to stop hot flushes and night sweats. I'm a healthy woman in my early 50s, no stress other than menopause. I've been having flushes, sometimes called hot flashes, for seven years. Soy estrogen supplements help the flushes, but at the cost of digestive upset. So I stopped them. Vitex helps all other menopause symptoms, like dryness and have no anxiety depression. But have put on about 10 pounds with no change of diet. I do intermittent fasting. I now have no morning appetite and have noticed my metabolism has been slowed. I'm not sure really what to do as the night sweats can be extreme, waking me up all night. One final strange thing is always I get a big flush upon waking, day or night, even though I've been sleeping and relaxed. All the literature I've said, read says it's hormone withdrawal. I know in Japan, for example, they don't suffer from flushes. But what can a Western woman do without resorting to bioidentical hormones, which I feel are still hormone replacement therapy, HRT? Thank you in advance. I appreciate you. All right, Shay, thank you, and I appreciate you. Here's what I want to do. We work with women every single week with exactly the same issues. I've actually done many podcasts already on this. So you can check out my podcast on how to fix female hormones. You can type in hot flashes at stephencabral.com forward slash podcast. You would have gotten your answer already. But again, I'm, I'm happy to do that because you know sometimes people are brand new and so they don't know and, and they ask the question. Maybe you've already gotten your answer, but this will still help a lot of other people if you've already gotten your answer. So I'm happy to answer it. Okay. We already know the answer, right? Because you've done certain things. You've taken soy, which raises estrogen levels. So most likely we're looking at low estrogen, potentially low progesterone as well. Well, here's a couple things that we can do. So one, right off the bat, it seems like there's a cortisol disturbance, whether you feel stressed or not, because the body can be stressed. Your mind might not be stressed, but your body may be. I would run a couple labs. You don't have to, but I'm going to give you options, okay? I would run a thyroid adrenal hormone 
when your typical symptoms are worst, okay? And maybe it's always the same, right? Because you're now into menopause and you might always be the same. Okay, that's fine. You can run it any day, any day of the week then, any normal stress day. Then I would run a hair tissue mineral analysis. You might be dramatically low in magnesium. In more of the Asian-based cultures, much more magnesium for sure in the diet. They take in lower levels of protein. They have lower levels of um, IGF-1. I could go on and on, but that's the gist of it. The other lab I would run is an omega-3. Now, if you don't want to spend the money on an omega-3 lab for inflammation, I would take one capsule of omega-3 support with lunch and one at dinner. Or I'd take one teaspoon of liquid one time a day. All right, now let's get on to potential supplements. Well, I would absolutely be doing daily foundational protocol level two or level three. I would use full spectrum magnesium, probably one at lunch, a couple at dinner, but the hair tissue mineral analysis will really give me the, won't give me an opinion. It will tell me exactly how much. I would make sure you're taking deep sleep protocol if you need it for sleep. And then I would be using a product called Estro Vera. And that one is by Metagenics, I believe and is a product that helps reduce or eliminate hot flashes in about 71% of all women. And it comes from a rhubarb extract. So that's um, Astrovera. I don't know if I've ever linked it up. Maybe I have, maybe I haven't. Let's see. I'll just go quickly to stephencabral.com forward slash podcast where everybody can get their answers. Go to that little search box down there. Don't enter your email if you've already got the uh, welcome package. And then just answer, uh, or which we type in? Estrovera. Estrovera. My typing is always atrocious. There it is. It's on episode 968. All right. Did I link it up? Did I link it up? I did. So head on over to stephencabral.com forward slash 968, and you'll find that link for Estrovera. All right. There it is. There you go. Take one of those before bed. You can take two if you need to, but typically we start with one. The Chase Berry is absolutely great. You're taking that. That's fantastic. The lab test will give us the exact amount if you need. And then seed cycling. That's another great one too. So if you're not doing any seed cycling, check out my podcast on that. Just go to stephencabral.com forward slash podcast, and you'll be able to get the answer for how to do seed cycling in full. All right. Great question. Let's do one more question. All right. Jay's up next. Hi, Dr. Rawl. Since coming off the contraceptive pill two and a half years ago, my face has become very, especially around the nose. I don't know what that means. It has become very, especially around the nose. It looks like I have oil coming out of my nostrils, which I find very weird. It's made me self-conscious. I haven't managed to get the cause with naturopaths. Apparently, my hormones now all look normal. I do drink one cup of coffee a day. Do you think this contributes? I've completed your seven-day detox and candida betrayal overgrowth protocol as I have had abdominal bloating. Overall, I'm fairly healthy. Any ideas on how to reduce the oiliness? There we go. Now we've got it. It's oiliness of the face in the skin or what could be causing it. Thanks for all the work you do in your time. Jay. Yeah, absolutely. So here's what we want to do. Run the thyroid adrenal hormone. Run it between days 19 and 21 of your cycle. We want to make sure that there's not a hormone imbalance. Just because your levels look normal, quote unquote, doesn't mean they're balanced. We actually want to look at your what's called your estrogen to progesterone ratio. And we want to make sure that it's above a 100, especially during the luteal phase of your cycle. We want to make sure that your testosterone is not above a 40, which could lead to a little bit of that oiliness and maybe some acne. Normal DHEA and also normal cortisol. We wouldn't want higher cortisol levels. Then we're going to look at your diet. We're going to make sure that it's good, it's clean for you, for your diet. And then also I want to make sure that you're sweating a couple days a week. Are you doing a sauna? Are you exercising? Sweat out some of the stuff that your body may naturally be trying to get out through that oil, right? The sebum and the, and the glands that produce that sebum. So that's a good part right there. What else can I recommend? We might do a little bit of intermittent fasting, 12 hours a day, maybe 14, maybe one day a week. But if we have that lab, we can at least get you started. We're probably going to do some magnesium as well, maybe some balanced zinc for the skin. That's where we're going to start. So it's kind of a a lot all at once. Feel free to rewind it, replay it, and uh, we'll be able to help you with this for sure. Make sure you're getting lots of water. You might not be getting enough water. And if your skin's too dry, use a natural oil on it when you get out of the shower every time you wash it. And um, just wash your face at night, maybe not in the morning. Because remember, the drier your skin is, the more your skin's going to rebound and produce more oil. Not a lot of people know that. So use a jojoba oil. 
Use an argan oil on your skin. Whatever you like, but make it natural. Put some oil back in your skin. After 10, 15 minutes, you can just wipe off the excess. And um, this has worked for many, many people. Uh, Hopefully, this helps with you. You can look into my natural facials. You can look into the bentonite clay we use for the face, the the French green clay. All of that can be looked up at stephencabral.com forward slash podcast. That is my time for the day. I appreciate all of you. Thank you for sharing this show. Thank you for reviewing this show on iTunes and all the other podcasts and players. I appreciate you. Hope you've had an amazing weekend and stay tuned because we've got a great mindset and motivation coming for you and me tomorrow. We all need it. All right, take care. Are you ready to heal yourself and then go on to heal others? If so, the Integrative Health Practitioner Institute can help you discover proven functional medicine protocols that blend the best of seven different healing disciplines from around the world. I personally share with you the exact handouts and protocols I use in my private practice that enable people to get well, lose the weight, and live longer, stronger. I want to pass this information on to the next generation of health coaches, and that is exactly why I created IHP. We are the future of the health coaching industry, and the skills and knowledge you will learn will make you an in-demand certified health coach anywhere in the world. Although we have many medical professionals taking the IHP certifications, no experience is necessary, and half our members have no previous health certifications. At the Integrative Health Practitioner Institute, our motto is a health coach in every home. Our goal is that you take this knowledge and then share it with family, friends, loved ones, your community, or in a practice where you create a career you love and can be proud of. The global IHP community is filled with some of the most kind and caring people in the world, and we can't wait to welcome you into our world soon. For more information or to set up a discovery call with one of our IHP Health Coach graduates, simply head over to integrativehealthpractitioner.org.